Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the FA18C and we're looking at INS navigation with the HSI. We have four modes of navigation in our aircraft. INS, TACAN, ADF and ICLS. INS, Inertial Navigation System, is our primary navigation method. It is waypoint based and we're starting in the mission editor here so that you can see the waypoints. Here's our aircraft. I have assigned it waypoints 1, 2, 3, 4 in a sequence. We'll show in this video how to fully use the HSI, the Horizontal Situation Indicator, to navigate and manipulate these waypoints, including moving them, adding them, deleting them, and resequencing them. The HSI can be on either the left DDI or the right DDI and or the lower AMPCD. As standard, it is on the lower AMPCD, the benefit of which is it's a colored display and you can have, as you can see, a moving map over it. That said, I prefer it without the moving map and I prefer it on the left DDI, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to click Main Menu, Supplementary, not Tactical, HSI here. This is our main HSI screen. Symbology. This cross here is our own ship. That's us. That is our current true speed in knots. That is our current ground speed in knots. They're the same because we have no wind today. This is the compass rose around the outside. East, north, west, south. The remaining symbology we'll look at shortly. Our first OSB option is our position update. How do you want our position to be updated? Click on it. It could be INS. That's our default. Or TACA. Or ADC, the Air Data Computer, or GPS, and HSI to get back to HSI. Rarely will it not be INS. Update, currently not functional. Next is the scale in nautical miles from our own ship to the edge of the compass rows. 40, 20, 10, 5, 160, 80, 40. Next is our mark point, of which we get nine mark points currently not implemented. Next is data where we get to look in more thoroughly at the navigation information. We will come back to that. Next is whether we want waypoints as our method of navigation. So the INS waypoints. We can box it or unbox it. With it boxed we have the waypoint method of navigation selected. We can cycle through waypoints. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and you can see the actual waypoints location is shown by this circle and dot here and the heading from me to that is shown this symbol here and the reciprocal that symbol there. At this point I can show that this line here is called a lubber line and that shows our current aircraft heading on the compass rows just uh, left of north as you can see. This little diamond here is our current track. At the moment our track is the same as our heading but if for instance we had wind on and we had some slippage then this would be heading maybe to the left maybe to the right it would not be the same direction as what we were heading. Next is our waypoint designate. This converts our currently selected waypoint into a TGT, a target point to deploy weapons on and we will have a look at that a little bit later. Next is our sequence and we have three sequences, one, two and three. One is populated automatically and we can adjust it if we want. Two and three are not generated automatically but we can populate them and adjust them if we want. So sequence one is currently selected to visualize it. We press that there and what we can now see is the tracks between the waypoints. We've sequenced the tracks. Let's zoom in. Waypoint one, two, three, four with the tracks between them. Next is our current course selection. So if we wanted to fly a certain course, for instance if we wanted to intercept a landing radial, then we could use our course switch here, just press it firmly with left or right click, and we've got now a course line that we can follow here. If we press it a little more firmly, eventually we will get on the UFC here, course select, we can then press it, and I want to enter a course for the course line of 078 degrees magnetic, Press enter. And you can see that we now have a course line set from our way currently selected waypoint, waypoint 4, in the direction of 078 magnetic. The same would work for TACAN as well. And we can see that our course selection is 078. Next is auto. This means that automatically, once we reach waypoint 1, it will automatically turn us to the next waypoint in the sequence, waypoint 2. Next, the selected waypoint information is shown up here. Currently, from our position, so waypoint two as selected here is 313 degrees magnetic and 10.0 nautical miles away from us with an estimated time to reach a current speed of one minute and 42 seconds. Next is time UFC. This allows us through the UFC to change various time settings. Set will allow us to change the current dates and I don't want to do that so let's do that again. ET sets a stopwatch, we're going to press that, and we've got a stopwatch starting down here and on the HUD and on the AMPCD, and if we press enter, 
that stopwatch now counts and it'll count up all the way up to an hour stop that press again to turn it off next countdown countdowns from six minutes once we press enter like that and we can pause it at any time by pressing enter and set it off again let's turn that off next do we want our time to be shown in zulu time or local time which are obviously different and we can see that it's currently set in i think this is zulu time and this is where we see it down here and down here or it's been covered up this guy here takes us back to the main menu sensors this is similar to the sa page where it will allow us to have radar targets for instance shown on our hsc but it's currently not finished so we're not going to go over that that's something that will be uh, added next is our heading select currently set at zero if we wanted to change our heading select press that left or right click and we've got the ufc option here to change it so heading select zero i don't know two three enter we've now got a magnetic heading there around our compass rows more information on that you can watch our hornet autopilot tutorial for more information on how to use the course select and fly with that please watch our tacan and radial intercept hornet video acl currently no function january 2020 vector currently no function mode this basically decides how we're going to display the HSI. Do we want the track shown at the top? In that case, we would press track at the top. Do we want north at the top? Press that. And north is now orientated to the top. Do we want a map on or off? Well, they, you can't show a map on the screen. That only works down in the AMPCD. That's modal. Do you want to decenter the screen? You can see that our aircraft is now down at the bottom of the screen and it allows us to look ahead by so many miles depending on the scale that we've set or SLU. SLU is an interesting one. It doesn't work at the moment, but if we make this screen assigned to the TDC, which I can do there with that diamond there, it will allow me to use the TDC up, down, left, right buttons to SLU the map around. Not working at the moment, but will be implemented. ILS, not relevant to today. TACAN, fully covered in the TACAN video, not relevant to today. Next, let's have a quick look at the hard. With our waypoint selected and our current ways point selected this too we can see that we are 10.0 nautical miles from waypoint two and we have a pipper up here in the heading tape which shows us which direction we need to go to get to the waypoint next we're going to go into the data menu where most of the work can be done there's a lot of data in here so we can choose our own aircraft a waypoint a tacan and m data has no function hsi will take us back into data our own aircraft shows our current ins position so if we unpause you can see that our northing and easting is changing. Current wind speed, the current wind direction, the current magnetic variation is 1.33 degrees in this part of the world. Here we have our GPS horizontal error of 16 feet, our GPS vertical error of 17 feet, and our GPS time. Extra functionality, nav CK has no function. Heading, do we want it magnetic or true? So currently magnetic, we can change it to true. And if we zoom out, you can see as I cycle between, magnetic heading tape, true heading tape, it's normal to stick on magnetic. We can change how the lat long is laid out. That's default with decimal minutes with two decimal digits. We could have degrees, minutes, seconds. We just get those two options. We're going to leave it on decimal minutes. Tours, terrain avoidance warning system, whether we want that on or off, and that's always going to be de defaulted on. More warnings. A warning for going below a certain feet in altitude of barometric and radar. And we want to set that we can press radar altimeter altitude uh, 2000 feet and then we've set a radar warning of 2000 feet norm currently not implemented no sec gps not implemented gps not implemented tac blim not implemented ufc not implemented next over to waypoint in fact we'll skip waypoint and just go to tacan this is quite interesting this allows us to assign a tacan uh, station if you like to various waypoints so if i wanted to apply a uh, attack and station to waypoint one we could go ufc and we could change well the attack and station x-ray yankee position elevation and magnetic variance anyway this is covered in attack and so we're not going to go through this today waypoint is what we're really interested in today currently selected waypoint two there and we can cycle through our available waypoints so that is the northern easting in the selected method of six digit that we've got at the moment so decimal minutes here it is the MGRS grid coordinate of that waypoint. Here is the elevation, currently in meters, ASL. Here is our offset information, range, bearing, grid, and elevation. If we wanted to, for instance, offset from a waypoint, 
uh, maybe for offset bombing or something like that. That's a separate video, we're not going to go through that today. Here is our time and target and ground speed for time on target. That is covered in the time and target Hornet video we've done, so we're not going to go through that. Here is our current waypoint sequence as relevant to sequence 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we can shake that about and move that up as we'll see later. Nav CK option not implemented. Our ability to cycle waypoints. Ref WP not implemented. Sequence, as we saw before, we can cycle between our sequences and when they're boxed, then they are selected for use. FLRP not implemented. Overfly 1 not implemented. This takes us back to our main menu. Precise. Do we want to use six digit coordinates or eight digit coordinates? So in this case, we've got decimal minutes with eight decimal numbers. Or we could have decimal seconds if we had decimal seconds selected back where we saw before. Datum 47 not implemented. Sequence UFC. This allows us to change parts of our sequence. Ground speed, target, and TOT are all a part of time on target navigation. Got a separate video on that. Insert waypoint, delete waypoint, and we'll go through that a little bit later. Next, air to air waypoint. This selects the current selected waypoint as our air to air waypoint, which means bullseye. The way we would use that is, for instance, uh, if we had a real mission waypoint, uh, sorry, bullseye up here, we would position our waypoint of interest over that bullseye there then we would come here we would box it waypoint three is now chosen as our mission bullseye and it will now appear for instance in our attack radar screen and we cover that fully in the attack radar we're not going to go over that gps no function slew no function ufc allows us to change the particular waypoint that we have selected at the moment we can change its lat long we can change its elevation grid not functional offset uh, does work but we're not looking at that today so we're going to come back to the screen shortly get back just HSI. The first thing I want to show is simply navigating between the various waypoints. So let's select number one. There is a waypoint zero. That's where we start, by the way. Uh, waypoint one is next. Unpause. So simply turn so that our heading, in this case magnetic carrot here, is over the waypoint marker there. Wait till we get to zero. And then because I've got auto selected, oh, I haven't. Now I have. Then it will automatically update. Let's skip forward. Elevation is not important here. We can be at pretty much any altitude. And we've got to it, and it's now onto waypoint two. So we're going to do a sharp turn. I didn't realize I got that fast. Pause there. You can see that I've gone quite heavily off track, and that's not important in this case. But if it was important, if we did have to stick to the track line perfectly, we could use our course line here. We would then get on the HUD course line information to tell us how to fly along the track to the waypoint. That's covered fully in our radial intercept, so we're not going to go over that now. Okay, four miles to waypoint two. At waypoint two, it's now taking us to waypoint three over on the left here. Five miles to waypoint three. Now here's where things get a little spicy. Waypoint three is our target waypoint, or we're going to make it our target waypoint. Uh, it is currently, if you remember, in the beginning when we were looking at the mission editor, somewhere near our target, but not near enough to drop a bomb on. So we need to just move it now. And one way that we're going to do this is go to the F10 menu, and we're going to find a target down here. And we're going to do this with precise coordinates, eight digit coordinates to get it as close as possible. To cycle through the coordinate method, looking up the top left, left oh, and Yankee, you see I've got the different coordinate methods. Now, I've got eight digit decimal minutes, so I've got to get the right ones. Well, there's eight digit, but that is not decimal minutes. That is degrees, minutes, seconds, and two digit decimal seconds, eight digit total. So don't be fooled into thinking those coordinates would work. The way we've got our Hornet set up today, they would not. So we would have to change to the other method of that long units as we saw earlier. So let's keep going. There's no good, no good. And that's the closest we're going to get. That is degrees, minutes, and three digit decimal minutes, total of seven digits. It'll be good enough for today. Hover over our target in this case. I'm gonna write down those coordinates now, and then we're gonna input them into the aircraft. Select waypoint three, we've already got it selected. Data, UFC, position, latitude, northing, which is the two button, and it's going to be 2506, enter and now we want the decimal minutes so that's going to be eight to eight and it's asking for eight digit rather than seven digits so i'm going to stick a zero on the end enter now we're going to type in the easting easting we need an extra zero at the beginning obviously because it's the it's the longitude it's just how it's going to work five six uh one eight enter three digit decimal minute of seven to 
zero with an extra zero because we're padding it out to eight digit enter elevation in feet of 119 feet asl uh check that looks good that looks good that looks good now note that if you had precise eight digit degrees minutes seconds decimal seconds mode then you would enter that slightly differently so you just have to understand there's two different ways of doing that so we've now moved the waypoint directly onto one of our targets and to prove that what we're going to do is go all the way back out to hsi and we're going to come back to this one waypoint designate we're going to turn the waypoint three into a target so press that and voila that diamond in the hornet means it's a target point and it's directly on that middle vehicle exactly as we said it in the F10 menu, we can now go drop a JDAM or a laser guided bomb or whatever we want on that target. So we've showed how we can edit a waypoint and or convert it into a target point. If we want to just get rid of the target point, we can press that and turn the waypoints back on. What if we want to resequence or add or delete waypoints? We're going to go to data, waypoints. Well, I want to add a new waypoint. I want to add waypoint 5 in and I want to add it after waypoint 1. That's how I'm going to edit my sequence. So, so I'm going to go to sequence. UFC, I'm going to go to insert waypoint. Which waypoint do I want to insert it after? Waypoint 1. Enter. What's the see, What's the name, if you like, of this new waypoint? It's going to be number 5. Enter. We've now added in the sequence waypoint 5. What if I want to delete that now? Delete. 5. Enter. And I'm going to delete 4 because I don't want that anymore. I want to add 4 back in. Insert. Uh, 4. Enter. And now I can go and populate that, select that and populate it with information. And if we wanted to use our auxiliary sequences, two or three, we would just select them and you can just go and add in uh, waypoints in whatever order you want again. And you can create new sequences like that. That's all I've got to show on INS Navigation January 2020. As more features are implemented into this INS and HSI, we will cover them in separate videos. I hope that was useful and see you later.